right guys we are back with another one here sorry about the noise today it's going to be a little bit loud in the background we're uh parked on the side of the road here testing this brand new cabinet we just installed this one and spliced it in the vault out there yeah there you can see that so now we're going to go ahead and uh, test everything that we connected and uh, i thought i'd throw together a quick training video for you guys that are new to the field and uh, have some networks you need to get tested and you're a uh, little unsure on how to go about it i'll be explaining all my tips tricks uh how to locate your losses how to keep track of them and uh yeah let's just go ahead here and start getting right into it hope you guys enjoy don't forget to like comment and subscribe so let's get it First things first, you guys, you're going to want to get your OTDR up, get it started, get your launch box out, go ahead and uh, clean up your connectors. You're going to want to get a cleat top here. If they work the best, you just go ahead and pull them back and slide your connectors through there. Like so, with your angle polished, you're going to want to make sure you run them with the, uh, the angle. So just go ahead and wipe her down, nice and clean. Uh, we'll get that in our third port. We already tested the first two just to verify our distances and whatnot. But uh, so once you get your O2DR all set up and I can go ahead and make another video on that. If you guys would like, just let me know in the comments. But another thing you're going to need is your piece of paper here. Okay. So you're going to have your count, your distance, your loss, and then location is optional. You're going to have to do it at the end anyways to find out where the guys are going to need to go to for the reburns. But you're going to want to make this little piece of paper here with those four categories okay so as you're testing and you run into something that say has a loss on it now this one here does have a loss out there but that's not a splice loss that's actually uh the type of cable that is out there um, installed we have a corning cable going to an afl cable in which those two cores have different diameters so we do get a little bit of a loss or sometimes a gainer depending on the direction um, in which the cable is installed and we're testing from. Anyways, though, um, back to the sheet here. As you're testing, say I run into the next one and I actually do have a splice loss. Well, I can just quickly write it down, right? Save the test result and continue moving. You don't want to sit there, spend time trying to figure it out where it's at right off the bat, especially if you have a lot to test. So like this network's kind of small, we're only testing up to 288, right? Like it has a 432 leaving, but only 288 is actually getting distributed out to customers. So that's all we want tested. That's all we'll test for them. It's just customer, that's what they wanted. So moving forward here, uh, once you got your piece of paper made up, everything's plugged in, you set up your OTDR, make sure you have your parameters per the customer. Um, we're only doing one wavelength here, 1550, five second tests, 100 nanoseconds. Yes, I get on 100 nanoseconds, we are just blasting right through it, but hey, that's what the customer wants, that's what we give them. So, ensure that your OTDR is set up to within customer parameters. I always do a, a test shot right off the bat. Here, I'll quickly save this one, we'll just shoot the next one. Once it's set right up, I'll throw it on a, an estimation distance. Since we placed the cable, I had a pretty good idea about how far these uh, shots were gonna be. So I threw it on two kilometers. And sure enough, the result pops up and it's about, you know, 80, 70, 80% of the screen, okay? You wanna have a little of the noise here in the background so you can actually see the trace end. And uh, we have our launch box there as well, which is a thousand meters. So this first event here, right there, is actually this connector right here, okay? So everything past that is the actual fiber cable out in the field there that we've installed and spliced together. So, uh, go ahead and check this one out. I always do that, just verify that your, your, your shot's about 80% of the screen, right? You don't wanna have it on five kilometers or something for a, 
a small shot like this and have your trace only show up on this half of the screen and the rest of this be noise. It's just pointless. You want to have the main part of your trace about 70-80% of your screen. Um, and you, you may have to adjust that as we go on, right? Depending on how big your network is. Um, for instance, with this one, uh, the shot that I'm shooting 1 to 4 is actually one of the first MPTs on the network. So it's going to be a shorter distance than the majority of the rest of the network. So as I'm moving along, I can see the shot starts getting longer, taking up more of the screen, and we're losing some of our backscatter noise here. Then I'll adjust it. I'll turn it to 2.5 kilometers, 3 kilometers, whatever it may be. Just make sure that you're adjusting as you're testing to ensure the 70 to 80 percent result on the screen. All right, it's a fairly big rant there, but. You guys need to replay it back you know go ahead for it so moving forward go check out our events on this one right our events are our connector here we've got dot 493 we're allowed up to a dot 5 on that with the requirements so that passes now this loss here that we keep occurring fiber after fiber the dot 43 okay that we are allowed up to a dot 5 maybe a dot 6 but pretty i'm just gonna stick with the dot five you know it's better that way anyways we won't run into any issues but that is because of the type of cable out there it's not actual splice loss it's the type of cable so as long as that stays under a dot five as we're testing we're good to go and we're keeping an eye on our distance now the very end distance here because since this is an mpt we have four fibers going there one to four in which five and onward is going to a different MPT. So our distance should change, right? These first four fibers should all have the same distance because they're going to the same MPT, right? This one's 451 meters away from this cabinet. So number four should be 451. And then as soon as we get to port five, we should see a distance change. Let's go ahead and shoot blast through these tests right quick. Quick save that one, head on to the next. And, uh, We'll see if we get a distance change here. If we don't, then obviously something spliced wrong. Ooh, there's a good one. So this part, brand new cabinet. That's another thing, you guys. This is a brand new cabinet. Regardless of that, you're gonna wanna have these Q-tips, okay? These are meant to clean the ports on the inside. I already cleaned these ports too, but we're still have a piece of dirt in there. This big reflectance we are seeing here on the screen. That's because of a piece of dirt inside there. Now, it still passes. We're allowed a negative 50 here and below. So we're at a negative 86. We're good to go. But I, I don't like that big spike at all. It doesn't look good. It's not consistent with the other results. So quickly to get rid of that, I would just grab one of my Q-tips. Give the inside of the port a cleaning. Take it in there, twirl it around a bit, okay? And I also take the cleat top and give it another clean, just like so. Now we'll jump back into port four. And we'll just shoot it again. No, I don't want to save it. Go ahead, give it another shot. See if we clear that up or not. Boom, look, look at that, zero reflectance. So that was just a piece of dust, dirt in there, either from factory or from transportation from factory to me. But anyways, now we have it under the parameters. We got our dot five three. That's a little bit high for my liking for that corning, for that corning cable to the AFL. So first one's first, I'm gonna say count four distance that it, the loss is at right here the loss is 235 meters away 235 meters away okay our loss is a dot five three all right and without even looking at the print since i placed built spliced this whole network i can already i already know the next location out past the fdh one which is act two that's where our loss is at. And that's where the cable change is at as well. 
So it's just some some of the ones that you'll find is super easy to find, then you'll have some troubles trying to find the other ones. But I'll show you guys a little trick later on in the video on how to, term, to determine splice locations with uh, a little trick with the tester right quick. But anyways, moving forward. So this one we can quick save. This one's the 452 still. Let's go ahead, get to port five. Let's see if we get a distance change here. It may be similar too because of the way the networks are placed here. These are kind of on similar runs, but it should have a little bit of a difference for sure. Let's go ahead and check. See, we got dot seven two. That's no good. That's not going to pass. Dot five one. See, so now we're sitting at four six one, four hundred sixty one meters. So we had a nice distance change there. We are getting a bit of a loss from the, uh, the cable switch there. And we also have a loss right here, which is, it can be accepted as long as it's actual connector damage in there and not a piece of dust. But we'll go ahead and give this a cleaning right quick, just like we did on the last one. And uh, we'll shoot it again, see if the loss change. If the loss doesn't change, then we'll just go ahead and make a comment on this one and we'll uh, show you how you do that as well start no and that's another thing too always double checking what count you're on with the actual count up top that you have it set for okay because you can get you can get rolling pretty quick here and out of nowhere you'll look down on your screen and it says you're on fiber 145 but you're over here on you know 148 you're three ahead of the count well now, you're gonna be, your test results are gonna be off. So there's another little somewhat of a trick, but pretty much you just gotta go back and find out where you um, actually made those skips and then retest over those. But uh, we'll explain that in a different video. That's not gonna be happening here. So our loss didn't change at the connector. So identification, we're gonna go to this. Get it on the keyboard right quick. Tested multiple times. Um, hmm. Yeah, tested multiple times. Tested and cleaned multiple times. So that's what it is. Tested, cleaned multiple times. So, simple as that. Another little trick too. Go ahead and uh, uh, control C. And go over there, and then space control E. Okay, it works. So now I have that copy and paste it. So as I'm moving along, little tip for you guys: that if you run into another one like this, or that needs to be typed out, instead of typing it all the way out, you got your keyboard here. Just control paste, control paste, and then you're on to the next one. It's all about efficiency. So we did have our distance change, and I believe this uh, MPT is actually another four fibers, five to eight. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue on here. Start. But yeah, just uh, gonna hammer through this, you guys, and it can be a little boring here, sitting here testing. I didn't even send the test through for some reason, but you can actually get moving pretty quick once you get a little. A little groove with it and for the most part when it comes to fiber as long as you don't have major losses you're looking for a straight line whenever you're testing distances if you see a bunch of drops or even gainers and stuff that are large dips right like if we zoom in here oops like this there's our actual trace okay and that's zoomed in so some of you may be looking at this like oh that's a large dip or that's a large dip these aren't really large dips like these are within parameters based off of the customer. So when like, for instance, if you have like a major loss out there, even a broken fiber or cracked in the sleeve, you'll see like 1.0 dB. So it'd be like double the size of those. So even from a quick glance back here without even looking at your events, I can tell right now that yes, that one's passed. It's, it doesn't have major losses in it. It's a straight line pretty much. 
So that'll help you speed things up too with the quick glances, but it's always good to run through those, verify that our connector is off there. So, oh, see, there we go. See, that one's done, on to the next. So yeah, this is only for distribution testing as well, you guys. There's also like, it's the same process for feeder networks and uh, other types of uh, builds and testing, like NDU, anything, like anything OTDR. Only thing that's gonna change is your parameters, right? But your distances and how many wavelengths they would like you to shoot on and what your um, splice losses have to be within. Same with your connectors. Uh, that one's looking good. You know what? We're we're going with the dot six. I'm almost certain it's a dot six for the according to AFL anyway. So we're gonna continue on past that one. Quick save on to eight. And now I know that we should have a distance change from eight to nine. Let's see here. I only got a little reflectance there, you guys. A little bit, little tiny bit. Uh, four seven three yeah that's fine and the reflectance is fine we'll just clean it up on this so. see here cleaning that's nine that's one one sec all right so we shifted from eight to nine um we went and shot it dot six one eight so 618 meters now, the last one was 57. So as you guys can see, we we're actually getting distance change in between every MPT. And that's what you want to see. If your distances aren't changing on the counts that are assigned to each MPT, you have issues with your network, okay? And you can go ahead and verify things like that, getting out there, Ruby and some of the pores trying to power meter, right? But this is your first line of defense, is the OTDR and testing the network. And then understanding what you're testing as well, you guys. Like, you have to have the map out in front of you. Obviously, I can't show you guys this map right now. Um, if you guys would like to see me break it down on a map, then uh, I'll, I'll, you have to let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see that part. But you have to learn how to read a map first before even being testing. So if you're trying to test the network and you don't know how to look at a map yet, yeah, definitely don't test the network. Simple as that. But anyways, since we all, we're going to assume you guys all know how to read a map. Um, and if you don't, let me know. But so, um, so now that we had our distance change here, we can check the next however many count it's going to be. I'm checking the map right now. It's looking like we're going to go from 9 to 12 as the next MPT. And then the count's going to shift to a different MPT from 13 to 18. And now you can write out a big list of these too. I can I can show you guys a little tips and tricks there, but let me know if you want in another video. So anyways, we got this one. It's within our uh, parameters for our losses and our connectors and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and just, uh, actually no, this connector's no good. We need, a little, uh, we need a little comment there just to go ahead and protect ourselves. So quick save on that one and continue on. And before we continue on here too, this is my method. I mean, a lot of guys in the industry will tell you, you only pull out two at a time so you don't get dust in the pour, whatever it may be, okay? But when you're running five second tests, you can't only have two open, you're moving too quick. There's too much nonsense going on, plug in, unplug in. So I like to do groups of 12, right? And as I'm getting over to this side, I'll start just in between tests. All right, as the machine's loading up and shooting, I'll just pop them out and usually pop them in right quick, two at a time. Oh. Okay, and then now you're just chasing yourself as you're testing, backfilling them so they're clean testing, and then opening new ones as you go along, and then obviously coming through and cleaning before you get to them, too. That's another thing. This will just save you time headache everything go ahead and clean the ports before you get plugged into them because that's another thing that can happen you guys if you plug into a dirty port with this connector on the launch box and there's a big piece of dirt in there you can scratch the ends of these connectors and if you scratch them you will have a big reflectance on here 
and sometimes you'll scratch them so bad that all your test results will come back with bad reflectance in which the only way to fix that is either send this launch box back off to the manufacturer and have them re -put, a, put a new battery connector on here or you're gonna have to go ahead and cut this off and splice on a new connector and patch cord so just to stay away from that like obviously it happens i've done it numerous times it is what it is it's, it's, it's part of the game but as long as you're cleaning all these ports prior and like trying to your preventative methods this will save you a lot of headache i've been running this launch box now this is a newer one actually i got a few of them but um been running this one for the last eight months still you can see no reflectance on this connector it's because i ensure i keep everything clean and i'm not plugging into any dirt anyways there's another little tip for you guys this this video is going to have a lot of knowledge in it sorry about all the background noise once again you guys it's just the area we're in we'll power through it though so what we got we get that in there we click saved it we're on 10 go ahead and test it So you've got some reflectance on that one just dirty in there and i even clean these ports too that's the crazy part about this you guys the brand new cabinet and uh i have the ports completely cleaned prior to even sticking them in there and you're still still got dirt in there that reflected up right quick. Cleaned her up pretty good, but still got a little tiny bit in there. Another tiny bit. 5.5, five, quick save, 6.17, going up to 12, quick save that. You know what? Just got a feeling. Just got a feeling. We'll give it another little clean in there. All right, you hit start. in you can clean a few ports if you got some time all right we got a fairly big connector loss here and then we have our usual loss out there so we're gonna go to identification get that comment in there so the customer knows we've tried retesting it multiple times and have cleaned it multiple times quick save it move on yeah so when it comes to testing like yes it can seem overwhelming at the start and then trying to read these results but it's really not that difficult you just got to cross all your t's and dot the i's and have someone actually teach you properly you you love testing i used i love sitting here all day you should throw a movie on and just get right to it but for today we're making a movie for you guys to teach you guys some things uh, yeah let me know in the comment section to you guys if you're liking the, liking the new way new style of videos with the training aspect of it where i'm really going into great detail of what i do what i'm seeing and how i get it, all these networks built so quickly and passed over properly and with all types of different customers too i'll do i build all types of networks but going in on this so we got that loss out there again our connector is looking good yeah it looks good you guys quick save so what's the distance here let's make verify six 619 meters we should get longer here let's find out get the cleaning going in between oh we're zoomed in we're zoomed in i got real long actually So, prime example of what I was explaining earlier in the video about where your distances are. So, it's telling us it's about a thousand meters, but it, it can't see because the shot's going straight off the screen. And that's because of our parameter setup right now. Those other ones we tested, they were all shorter runs. So, we were able to have it on two kilometers. Now we gotta turn it up a bit 2.5. Shoot it again. Don't save it. 
So let's see. Let's see what we get at here. Take the auto. Okay, and now we're like, you know, 90, 95%. Still, it's a little too much. What we want to do, we'll try 3K now. We'll see what happens here. All right, see, that's about 70, 80% now of the screen. It's looking good. All right, 444. It's a good number. It's a good number. Um, dot two six and our connector, 1.22. So this is 1.22 kilometers up. So these ones were only going about 400 meters from this cabinet. This one's going 1.2 kilometers away from this cabinet, okay? It's a fairly sizable network. It's about four four main neighborhood streets that we long to for a new area actually um but there we go now we we have our um distance change so we know all the way up to there it's all spliced correctly so we'll just continue on here that's within parameters we'll save it into the next port there we go yeah i mean there's not a whole lot more to it for this type of testing it's uh pretty straightforward just keeping your eye on everything making sure it's all running correctly and uh yeah just testing and saving you guys you know i like to call the testing portion of the networks just uh it's the money printer because uh, you're sitting here every five seconds and just cha-ching cha-ching it's uh it's quite the job but anyways yeah that looks good looks good quick save and already in the next board we can uh keep going here get a little test in action going yeah. all right looks like some some minor losses okay all right see how the rest of the trace though once we get past this spot where we customer had only cable they had was the afl and the rest of the network's corning even the cabinet's corning it's like well we're definitely gonna have a little section with a gainer and a loss so here it is right that's okay though because the whole network looks great looks great like that is clean there's a little gainer out there there must be another little chunk out there huh thought i would have noticed that i'll have to go Go back through all my photos of all the uh, the closures we built there. See if I can spot more AFL cable. I don't think there was more, but it might be a 96 out there. All right, so oh, geez, that looks good to me. Like that. Quick save it. 16, 16, into the next one. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it, you guys. And then. Um, I'm going to keep continuing on here, uh, fly through. There's no point in making you guys watch all that. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll get all this tested and we'll jump back here and we'll go over any of the losses I found and then a few other tips and tricks on how I determine where all those are at. All right, we'll see you in the next clip. All right, we are back as we uh, got through all the tests and just did the final test here. As you can see on the screen, pretty short run on that one, only about... 857 meters slight loss in there and that's from that corning the afl cable totally fine though so yeah we uh out of the whole network here we only had out of the whole 288 fibers we had connected out there we had three of them in which one was here at the fdh so we'll do a quick re-splice on fiber 228 we had a loss out there on fiber 242 is, uh, 241 meters so it's the second act out second work location dot six nine we need to get that under a dot uh, dot six so we're going to get that re-spliced right quick and then we also had one most likely it's broken in the splice sleeve that uh dropped off early it's supposed to go about 800 meters it's only going to act two so uh yeah the, the way i determined these locations right quick was on the print the majority of the time the uh the network designers will implement spare fibers at uh splice locations so as i'm testing the network 
and I run into those spare counts and a lot of the time with spare count you'll get a big reflectance on the screen um, yeah and that'll let you know you're getting reflectance of the light shooting out and in which by going over those uh, locations and keeping an eye on your map as I'm testing it out and I spot some spare count I'll check where what locations it's spare at and then I'll go ahead and write the distance down for that location so Act 4 was at 940 meters, Act 5, 771, so on and so forth, okay? And the reason I do that is so that when I'm finished testing and I have all my reburns written out, I can go ahead and check the, the distances. Where What were the distances I had written down? And then reference them with the distances of the spare counts at the splice locations. And then you can determine, oh, hey, this one's at this distance, it's matching my other location. That must be where the reburn is on that certain count. And that'll save you a lot of headache of trying to jump in and out of closures. You'll be able to pinpoint them very easily with this method. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, we're gonna wrap it up here. Shouldn't be too long, one, maybe a 40 minute um, video right quick. A lot of great info though. Hope you guys enjoyed. For those who stayed to the end, I truly appreciate the the views and i hope you guys like the content uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh yeah we'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching